No, no, I think we'll have discussion together. Um, I mean, good mid morning. And uh, thank you, Professor Ramaswamy Iyer, for inviting me from the southern corner of the country to this place for talking about uh, the rivers of Kerala Western Ghats. Um, I think uh, Professor Janakrajan has already said the political, social undercurrents of what's happening to our rivers and how our rivers are uh, moving from the living to the dying. And, to, and so I would touch more upon the social and ecological aspects of uh, which lead to the present position of why most of the rivers in India and in which even Kerala, which is considered to be God's own country and which is considered to be one of the best rainfall receivers in the entire country, even there, why the rivers are dying. So I have just changed the title a little bit because as Professor Ramaswamy is saying, I would not say all the rivers in Kerala are dead. Like, uh, uh, is, there, is there a live river in Tamil Nadu? But here, it is somewhere in between. All the rivers are between the living and the dying. So, or half dead or half living. We can say it in some other way. Um, but since uh, I'm very happy that some students are over here because I, I don't know whether at my age you would be able to see a living river in India. So, I just invite you to Kerala to imagine what would have been a living year, liver, living river? What would have been? I mean, can you imagine? Let us let us try to imagine in a Western Ghats. I mean, I'll, I'll come down to what is Western Ghats later on. What could have been a living river in the Western Ghats? I mean, based on uh, my past ex my experience of traveling through the entire Western Ghats, not only in Kerala, the entire Western Ghats, and especially on the to the west flowing rivers, because unlike the east flowing rivers, like what Janak was saying, which are very large with large catchments. All the west flowing rivers in the western Ghats, right from Gujarat up to Kanyakumari, the entire 1,600 kilometers, most of them are very small rivers with very small catchments. So you can't even put them on a map. So I don't, I'm not being, I mean, bailing out myself for not having a map. The thing is, you can't even show them on a map. I mean, if you look at the entire water resources of India, if you look at the Ministry of Water Resources website, you'll always see that all these rivers are grouped together. You don't have individual maps for any of the west flowing rivers in the western Ghats. And Kerala, uh, so, but at the same time, if you go deeper into them, what was a living river in the Western Ghats? If you look at that, these are, these are, the, four, these are the important characters I would give to it. Because uh, one important aspect I think which we uh, bear in mind is that Western Ghats is a global biodiversity hotspot, which has got one of the best tropical rainforest, was one, uh, I mean, or was supposed to have one of the best tropical rainforests. And of course, even the Kaveri, which uh, Professor Janakrajan was talking about, also originates from the Western Ghats, but on the eastern slope. So what would be a good river, living river in our imagination? One which evolves or one which originates from a good forested catchment. So when I say could have been, that means we don't have good forested catchments now. Secondly, habitat continuity. If you take any document, any international document on the Western Ghats, you will find that always the same repetition comes in. I mean, the most important problem with regard to the Western Ghats catchments is the habitat continuity has been lost. And because the habitat continuity is being lost, and the, the continuity of the rivers has also been lost, even at the place of the origin. And a good river according to me, a healthy river according to me, is that one which flows, like for you, the Ganga River Basin Action Plan, which is modeled by the central government, you have the Aviral Dara. You have one of the five objectives or five missions of the National Ganga River Basin Authority. I mean, the big project, the, the big project or plan that is going on. One of the important missions is Aviral Dara, continuous flow. So a good river, a healthy river, according to me, is that one which flows from the source to the sea. So now you can see that it is not, it is not that way as it is now. And as we all know, the most important source of fresh water for us to survive is uh, carried by our rivers. So a river that carries fresh water up to the coast. And a uh, very important aspect with, with respect to our Western Ghats rivers is all our Western Ghats rivers, once upon a time, had good riparian forests. That is riverside forests. Riverside forests which are very unique, which are very niche specific, which have those species, flora and fauna, which you don't find in the other catchment. And uh, intact river banks, 
river banks that are not eroding which are which don't have landslides which are very beautiful and which have a continuous riparian stretch even kaveri Kave once upon a time had such a riparian stretch up to the coastal area i'm sorry up to the delta i mean till the delta is formed up to the flood plains and very important is fertile flood plains and deltas because actually most of our agriculture our richest agriculture has survived on our flood plains and deltas uh, professor janak rajan was talking about the kaveri delta for for kerala rivers since they are very small and with very small catchments only two rivers are the periyar and the chalakudi have good a little amount of delta or flood plain but even here there was a good uh, agricultural base once upon a time just 30 years back and rich biodiversity because with it goes without saying that because it's a western ghat river we we have to expect that it would have the richest or the highest biodiversity in the entire in entire indian subcontinent and very important we always we forget or we dis, we dealing communities from the biodiversity because we had very i mean we had river dependent communities and livelihoods very important who had a sense of belongingness and ownership to the river because if a river has to survive as an intact ecosystem if a river has to survive as a living one living entity then you need people you need communities uh, because let me tell you i mean take the case of yamuna or take the case of delhi how many people in delhi knows from where all they get the water that comes from the tap we don't know it let me tell you the same thing is happening in kerala a person living in the kochi metro which is the biggest metro in the state doesn't know that the water from comes there from the periyar river you are you take a survey of the people living there none of them would know maybe 0.0001 person would know it so that is the situation now and very important also is the river culture and aesthetics because each river has evolved its own culture its own aesthetics which has been molded by its landscape because the western ghats rivers holds a culture which is different from the ganges or the brahmaputra so and which has been molded by the landscape the people and especially and the livelihoods because the livelihoods because I, according to me i look at a river in this such a broader picture i mean such a broader uh, i mean mindscape or which an, in a broader landscape from the source to the sea so when we talk about living rivers i think we should start talking about whether a river is flowing to the sea with all these criteria into it and uh, i mean i'm just giving you a glimpses of certain patches of living river patches in the country i'm sorry in the in the western ghats uh, kerala western ghats because for example this is the riparian stretch i was talking about which is how home because when we talk about living rivers we only talk about the human beings and the other dependencies we are not talking about the the other biodiversity like the fishing eagles and the hornbills who are also who also need a living river a po- for example a polluted kaveri or noel cannot uh, sustain a hornbill or a fishing eagle and uh, sustain its uh, its uh, daily nutrition or daily needs because so a good riparian patch even if it's for a 1 km 2 km stretch will be able to sustain a good bird diversity and this is also part of our uh, this is a river in the vinad which is all uh, tributary of the kabini which is an east flowing river it's a tributary of the kaveri so this actually ghats i mean these ghats if you now these are all abandoned once upon a time these were teeming with this was a social life this was a place where women used to come together which is a place of gossip of uh, interactions of so many things i mean what is happening in the entire con- in the entire village used to be exchanged over here it was the grape wine i mean rivers were also the so centers of grape wine for us but now and with all these beautiful bamboo patches now these are also now reduced to islands the aesthetics the the enjoyment the happiness the peace that a river gives to us a living river that gives to us that's i think very important and my dear my dear children that is something which we are losing out in our race for the uh, i mean development that uh, janak was talking about and also i mean this is i need not explain about this what is a river to us and uh, in its all even a small magpie robin will require a little patch of flowing water and that's a magpie robin for the information of the kids because we have uh, i mean in the in the river which i am working that's a chalakudi river which is in the western ghats we have already identified there are 265 bird species which are dependent on a single small 144 km river then you can imagine the larger river systems or how much would be the dependence and these are all these are all river dependent livelihoods even they have their uh, they have their life which is dependent on the river and if you now look at the dying rivers you won't find any of these species for example this this fish that is osteoictylis longidorsalis is one of the food fishes for the tribals who are living in chalakudi in periyar in uh, bharatapura but now the tribals are not finding this fish and their so it's a source of nutrition this is all linkages 
while we develop the river while we build dams there while we pollute the river we are not concerned about these linkages which go back to those communities who do the least damage to the river